It was late 2002 in Japan, a new generation of Pokemon was on the horizon, along with a new portable system that would exploit the capabilities of the new games, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. For the first time, important mechanics such as double battles and Pokemon abilities would be introduced, making the games an essential part of the franchise's history. In this iceberg, we'll cover the secrets, mysteries, unused content and fascinating facts about Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, as well as the remakes, Pokemon Colosseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Welcome to the Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald iceberg. Say my name, Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. Too Much Water 7.8 on November 18, 2014, IGN published its review of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire for Nintendo 3DS, which praised the title's gorgeous CG details and post-game easter eggs, while listing the overabundance of HMs and water as its cons. The game received a rating of 7.8 out of 10. Given the geographical setting of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire in Hoenn, the review's commentary on there being too much water instantly became a point of contention among the IGN members and fans of the game at large. It's interesting to notice that the too much water statement was mainly referring to the fact that many water Pokemon were present in the game, making it imbalanced, and not too much about Hoenn being 75% water. This review became so popular that it was referenced in the Gen 7 games when taking pictures of Pokemon with Rotom, as a user would comment 7.8, too much water. You're not the one. Ghost Girls became a common theme since Generation 4, and the Gen 6 remakes of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire are not the exception, as there is a girl on Mount Pyre who will tell the player, no, you're not the one. This girl seems to be the same girl that appears in Pokemon X and Y, uttering the same creepy words. Ghost Girl Creepy things occurring in Pokemon are not uncommon, and to prove this, let's go to the Elite Four, specifically where the player faces Phoebe for the first time in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. During the cutscene, we can see that the camera perspective changes from first person to a third person perspective. But not only that, if we pay attention, we can see that this perspective looks as if it was a person, and not a fixed camera due to the slight movements that are apparent in the video. For a split second, we can see a little girl in the corner of the room. Whether she is related to Phoebe or the player, we might never know. Braille Messages If you were a kid, an adult, or an old person in the early 2000s, it is likely that you didn't know what Braille is, and if you know, it's almost guaranteed that you didn't know how to read it. This is a problem many players faced when they came across the sealed chamber, an underwater cave on Route 134, very hidden from casual players. Inside this place, several messages with dots can be found on several walls. These dots are Braille, a tactile writing system used by visually impaired people. Such messages held several instructions on how the player should proceed in order to unlock the different locations around Hoenn and also encounter the legendary golems. Abandoned Ship Also known as the SS Cactus, the Abandoned Ship is a wrecked ship located on Route 108 in Hoenn that looks like it could have carried passengers and cargo when it was in operation the abandoned ship is mentioned by a character in the Oceanic Museum, saying that the model of the SSN reminds him of the abandoned ship. This led people to think that the SS Cactus was in reality the SSN shortly after its wreckage. However, if we take the timeline into account, Gen 1 and Gen 3 take place at the same time, so judging by the state in which the abandoned ship is, I don't think a ship can decay in such a way shortly after the wreckage. Besides, although not canon to the games, we could see that the SSN was sinking in the ocean. Mirage Island In the real world, there have been reports of phantom islands, islands that at some point were believed to have been seen by explorers in the past, but that despite efforts to locate them, they are nowhere to be found. An example of this island is Hybersil, 
a place described by Irish myths to be cloaked in mist, except for one day every seven years, when it became visible. This appears to be the inspiration for Mirage Island in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, an extremely rare island that has a chance of 1 in 65,536 to be seen by the player. If the player is lucky enough, he will see a huge island on Route 130, where Wild Wynut and a Lychee Berry can be found. Unused Music As in every Pokemon game, there are always unused tracks that can be found within the game's data. Some of them sparked rumors not only about Team Rocket being present at some point in the game, but also about the possibility of catching the legendary beasts in the Hoenn region, as well as traveling to previous regions of the Pokemon world. If you listen to the following tracks, you will understand why. White Rock In Mosdip City, there's a white rock sitting close to the Space Center. A girl next to it explains that the white rock was placed there by the people working at that research facility for their rockets to fly safely. The girl then asks the player what they use to make wishes. She mentions that she uses wish tags. And this is what's interesting, because back in the day, there were rumors about a mythical Pokemon that had wish tags attached to its head. And we are talking about Jirachi. As expected, many rumors on different websites and YouTube emerged on how to get Jirachi using this white rock. Everything was fake, but to this day, you can still find a couple of nonsensical tutorials on how to make this mythical Pokemon appear. Deoxys on the Moon Talking about rumors, another popular one was that of Deoxys being on the moon. At the Mustip Space Center, a man by the window will reveal the number of successful launches there have been. The number is an indicator of the number of weeks since the game was started. Many rumors have been spread about this number and its relation to Jirachi and Deoxys. Many believe that if the launches reach a certain number, the player will be able to ride a rocket into space and battle Jirachi or Deoxys on the moon. Like the truck rumors of Generation 1, this rumor is false. In the remakes, however, it is possible to go to space and battle Deoxys, perhaps in reference to these rumors. Beta Pokemon We've had a new Pokemon for every generation, and Gen 3 is not an exception. Take for example Torchic, Trico and Groudon. They do look different, but we can clearly connect them to the Pokemon they later became. Another interesting case is Latikan, a Pokemon who would later inspire Latias and Blaziken. Later on, we will see a lot of interesting unused Pokemon that were discovered in 2020. Text Errors the Pokédex entry for Mawile in version 1.0 of Pokémon Ruby has its name misspelled as Mohile with an H. 
The script used for when the player uses a recovery item such as a potion displays recovered by X points. Where X is any integer, this script is always used, even if the item only restored the Pokemon health by 1 HP. In this case, the game displays Pokemon recovered by 1 points. Waylord and Skitty can breed. In the Pokemon games, there are the so-called egg groups, categories of Pokemon that are compatible to breed with certain species. It would be expected that the breeding species would look alike or belong to the same type, but back in the old days, the fact that a small tiny Skitty could breed with Waylord, the biggest Pokemon at the time, became a meme. The Relicant and Waylord Connection the significance of why Waylord and Relicant are needed to unlock the caves across Hoenn might have something to do with the general theme of the Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald games, the relationship between land and the sea. Relicant is based on the Silican, a creature that is considered to be closely related to the ancestors of all land-living vertebrates. Waylord is based on the Whale, a creature whose ancestors once lived on land but have since evolved to live in the ocean. Berry Glitch The Berry Glitch is a glitch only found in early versions of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, which affects the game's internal calendar. The name of the glitch comes from the fact that the first thing a player will usually notice is that all berries that have been planted have ceased growing. This glitch happens one year after the game is first started, or one year after the internal battery is replaced, and causes all calendar-based events to be delayed by 366 days. After the glitch was officially acknowledged by Nintendo and the Pokemon Company, they provided several methods to mitigate the effects of the glitch, and incorporated a permanent fix into later production runs of the game. Female Latican Trainer there's an unused trainer seen riding Latican in early concept art. It is difficult to tell whether she was intended to be a playable character, rival, or supporting character. This character has a strong resemblance to an unnamed character shown riding Latios in official artwork, and also resembles the gym leader Claire, at least in her hair color. Celebi in Colosseum one of the rarest Pokémon in Generation 3 was Celebi, as the only way to obtain one besides a 10th anniversary event that occurred in the US was with a Pokémon Colosseum bonus disc that was only available in Japan. In the West, Jirachi was available, but it would take more than 3 years since the release of Pokémon Ruby, Emerald and Sapphire to obtain this Grass Psychic Mythical Pokémon in the US. Oceanic Museum Entrance this museum, located in Slateport City, can be entered free of charge before Team Magma or Team Aqua leaves if the player lacks the 50 Poké Dollars fee. This will prompt the receptionist to believe that the player is part of either Team Magma or Team Aqua in order to avoid stopping the player from making progress in the game. Trumpets The Pokémon game soundtrack is memorable and nostalgic, but many iconic tracks belong to the third generation of Pokémon for its heavy use of trumpets or French horns. Here are some examples. Shellos it's an old tradition that Pokémon that were planned for a certain generation were discarded and added later. This was the case of Shellos and Gastrodon, who appeared in Pokémon Diamond and Pearl, but were supposed to appear in Ruby and Sapphire according to an interview in Nintendo Power with Game Freak. Your family is from Johto. Although most protagonists in the Pokémon games belong to the regions where the game takes place, this is not the case for Brendan and May. In Pokémon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, a non-player character in Petalburg City mentions that Norman, your dad, and his family are from Johto. In Pokémon Black 2 and White 2, Norman reveals that he is more specifically from Olivine City. 
In a dialogue in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the player's mom also mentions that they moved from Johto. Far Away Island A secret island lies far away from the Hoenn region, where a mythical Pokemon resides, Mew. The first mythical Pokemon awaits those with the old sea map. As far away as it might be, this island has been previously visited by Mr. Fuji, the same person who gave Red the Pokeflute to awaken the Snorlax, blocking several points in Kanto. This is the place where most probably he got DNA from Mew in order to create Mewtwo, one of the most powerful Pokemon in existence. Before leaving the island, he left a message for whoever stepped on it that reads the following. September, October, November or December 6th day. If any human sets foot here again, let it be a kind-hearted person. With that hope, I depart. Fuji The Pokemon Mansion journals from Red and Blue speak of this mythical Pokemon having been found in Guyana, South America, and also other sources like the uncut story of Mewtwo's origin, where an expedition funded by Team Rocket went in search for this elusive Pokemon. It is unknown if at some point Dr. Fuji and his friend Blaine were part of Team Rocket's scientists, or they were independently hired to work for the evil organization. Ore is based on the US Many players would say that the first Pokemon region to be based on the US is Pokemon Black and White, as the Unova region is supposed to resemble New York, but in 2003, the Ore region was born with its inspiration found in Phoenix, Arizona. Seamovil and the Infinity Energy Seamovil was a facility commissioned by Greater Mobile Holdings and led by Watson to extract the natural resources of the ocean. Due to several incidents, such as the closure of New Mobile, the facility was closed. The place sounded like a terrible place to work, if we take into account the slogans found in the place. Say good morning very loudly. Don't bring Pokemon to your workplace. Always arrive on time. Always stay late. Lay your life on the line in safety checks. Take joint responsibility for teamwork. Obey your superior's orders absolutely. Maintain top quality. Give up your sanity. Worship and praise the founder. Don't expect time off before you retire. No need to think, just work unceasingly. Confidential documents can also be found in the facility. They read the following. Devon Secret Investigation Report The development on new energy turned out to be true. The energy that uses Pokemon's bioenergy is called Infinity Energy. Investigation Report on Watson A series of actions related to cancellation of new mobile project turned out to be true. I recommend prompt disciplinary action against him as a traitor to our group. There are many documents that can be found at the place, so if you're interested, you can check the Bulbapedia page of c -Mobile. Missing Battle Frontier The Battle Frontier is considered to be one of the best post-game areas in Pokemon history. This place is composed of seven distinct battle facilities, each led by a frontier brain who may be challenged after certain winning streaks have been made through their respective facility. There was an outcry from the Pokemon community when they realized that the Battle Frontier would make a comeback in the remakes, and instead, the Pokemon Meso would replace the battle facilities that so many players were waiting for. Yunichi Masuda made a controversial comment about why it was excluded from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, stating that, put simply, the Battle Frontier wasn't included because only a tiny number of players would have appreciated and used this game feature. Players get fed up more easily than they did in the past and aren't attracted by these demanding challenges. Bad Egg I remember trading an Articuno from my Pokemon Fire Red to Sapphire when suddenly the connection got interrupted. When I checked on my Pokemon Sapphire version, I realized that instead of an Articuno, there was a strange egg holding a Master Ball, the same item I gave to my Articuno. This egg turned out to be a bad egg. I didn't know anything about it, so I decided to see if I could hatch it, but after hours of trying, everything was in vain. 
I then read on the internet what it was about. An error handler in the core and side series Pokemon games and Pokemon Home for Pokemon with invalid data or that are detected as being modified by unauthorized software. This was very strange to me, as I never used cheating devices on my consoles, unless I was playing on an emulator. Pomic Glitch the Pomek glitch involves using a Pomek Berry on a Pokémon whose current HP is very low. The Pomek Berry lowers the HP EVs of a Pokémon by 10 in Generation 3. Since every 4 EVs is equivalent to 1 HP at level 100, the Pokémon's HP will decrease with each Pomek Berry used as long as the Pokémon has 4 or more EVs in HP. In this way, it is possible to lower the Pokémon's current HP to zero without causing it to faint or a negative number. I won't go any further into technicalities, but the effects of this glitch are awesome, as it basically allows the player to access any Pokémon or item in the game, even event items like the Aurora or Mystic Ticket, as well as the elusive old map exclusive to Japan that allowed you to reach far away island to catch Mew. This could only be done in Pokémon Emerald at the time, However, it was a risky technique that could turn out very badly if you performed one of the steps wrong. I personally wanted to use this glitch to catch a shiny Mew, but I didn't dare to risk my save file, as to this day it's 18 years old. Cerebi.net Reference Cerebi.net is a fan site created in the fall of 1999. The website became so influential that Game Freak decided to add a map created by Cerebi depicting the whole Pocky Earth. Definitely a well deserved reference for a website that has put so much effort. No special ability. It is known that all Pokémon from Generation 3 onward have special ability. However, there is a text of Pokémon with no special ability, suggesting that early in development not all Pokémon were planned to have one. Nonetheless, this could have been a placeholder while the development team came up with something suitable for each Pokémon. Snowing in the internal data, there's a weather effect for snowing that looks rather incomplete, as it only has 4 snowflakes falling once, but seems like it was originally going to be used in the final release. A likely location for using this would be Mount Chimney, as it might have been originally planned to be a snowy mountain instead of a volcano. Pokemon Colosseum's Dark Hero Pokemon Colosseum's protagonist, Wes, is very unique, as he's the only playable character to have been part of a villainous team. It is unknown why and how he joined Team Snagon, as well as what his original intentions were when he stole the Snag Machine from his team. It's possible that, before meeting Rui, his plans were still to keep being a villain stealing Pokemon from other trainers. Shiny Mechanics there was some misunderstanding about how shiny Pokémon work in Pokémon Colosseum. Some people thought that you could catch a shiny Pokémon and that due to a bug in the game after purification, its shininess could be lost due to the Pokémon having all its characteristics reset during the process. But this is not the case. What's odd about shiny Pokémon in Colosseum is that when you first encounter a shadow Pokémon, it will never be shiny. The only possibility for it to be shiny is after you catch it. In other words, you can encounter a non-shiny Pokémon and catch it, but once it's in your party, its secret and trainer's ID changes, opening the possibility for it to be shiny, so soft resetting at the beginning of the battle will never let you know if the Pokémon will be shiny until you actually catch it. Signs on Southern Island the Southern Island is a location in Hoenn that was accessible only with the Eon ticket that was distributed by Nintendo during special events. Once on the island, the player will be able to find Larios or Larias. However, what's mysterious about this place is a sign that shows at the entrance of the Deep Forest where the legendary Pokémon are found. It reads, Those whose memories fade seek to carve them in their hearts. There is an object in the middle of the forest that when interacted after facing the Pokémon reads the following. All dreams are nothing but another reality. Never forget. 
who or what left those messages on the island was a mystery back in the day. But if we go to the remakes, those messages are not written, but spoken telepathically to the player, implying that those words actually came from Latios and Latias. Shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Colosseum Shiny Pokemon have been entries for all previous icebergs, and this won't be an exception. Shiny Pokemon, specifically those from Pokemon Colosseum are very special, as their colors can radically differ from those seen in the Game Boy Advance games. Archie and Jirachi The past of many characters in Pokemon remains unknown, and only bits of information are available while exploring the world. One of these pieces of information can be found in Alpha Sapphire, specifically in the shape of a picture in Shelly's room at Team Aqua's hideout, where she and Archie can be seen with a Pokemon with three notes attached to its head. The Pokemon in question is actually the mythical Jirachi, who under unknown circumstances found Archie, or was found by him and Shelly. This Pokemon is said to conceive wishes, so it's normal to wonder what kind of wish Archie or Shelly asked for when in the company of Jirachi. Archie and Maxi belong to the same team. The two bosses of Team Magma and Aqua are known to be rivals, but according to a Team Magma grunt at the Team Magma hideout in Pokemon Omega Ruby, Archie and Maxi belong to the same team once, although it's never stated which one. Masuda's Nightmare In an interview with Junichi Masuda, he explains how Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire were some of the hardest games to make in the Pokemon series. He said, at the time, the atmosphere and general thinking was that the Pokemon fad was over, and there was huge pressure to prove people wrong. The next time I visited it was all Star Wars. Everyone was saying it was on downtrend, the fad's over, and I really felt that pressure to make something amazing. I got really stressed out, and had to go to the hospital, and had some stomach issues, and had to get a camera inserted and they didn't know what it was. Very stressful. The night before release, I had a dream that it was a complete failure, a total nightmare. We at Game Freak took that as a challenge and said, it's not dead, we're going to show you guys you're wrong. The morning after, the day of release, I went into the local shop and saw people lining up to buy it, and I was extremely relieved. It was close, super scary at the time. The single most unlikely event in Pokemon Spinda is a very peculiar Pokemon. The amount of different patterns they can have is so big that there are 4,294,967,295 variations of the same Pokemon, which is reflected in their spots. So, how likely are you to run into a random horde of perfect shiny Spinda, all with the same spot pattern and hidden ability? The final result is this. To put this number into perspective, there are less atoms in the entire universe than this number. Secret Room in Sutopolis There is a house in Sutopolis city where a secret room blocked off by trees can be found. This entrance is impossible to access even by using cheat codes to remove the obstacles as there is no warp point assigned to that tile. However, this secret room was supposed to have been accessed with an e-reader card that would have allowed the player to battle random trainers with specific teams. Parallel Universes The existence of parallel universes in Pokemon started becoming popular with remakes, especially with the launch of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. During the Delta episode, Xenia says that her people have passed along the lore about the distortions in the world 
from generation to generation, born by the mega evolution mechanism, and about the existence of another world which they have long observed to be similar to their world, and yet not the same, talking about the presence of another Hoenn, probably referring to the Hoenn world of generation 3, as she implies that there might be a world where mega evolution is unknown, and in which the war fought 3000 years prior actually never happened. This means that at least the remake's story of these games exist independently from those of Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. It is debatable if every single remake of all the Pokemon games, for example Fire Red and Leaf Green or Heart Gold and Soul Silver, exist in an alternative universe from their original counterparts. Hello Kitty Another short one. In Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, an ace trainer on C-Mobile mentions that she found a high Skitty doll in the facility, an obvious reference to Hello Kitty. A Lolan Executor Reference There's a house in Lilikov City with a poster of what looks like an Alolan Executor. Although it could simply be a normal palm tree, the fact that at the time they were probably already working on Pokemon Sun and Moon might be a hint that indeed is an Alolan Executor. Moreover, back in 1997, there was a depiction of Executor with an extremely long neck which belonged to the Japanese Pokemon Jungle Booster Box. Timeless Friendship if you happen to have a Pokemon from the original Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald transferred all the way to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, if you go to the Game Freak office in Lilikov City with that specific Pokemon in your party, one of the staff members will be surprised and he'll proceed to give you a diploma recognizing your love for Pokemon. Enigma Berry An Enigma Berry is a type of berry introduced in Generation 3 in this generation, it is used as a placeholder for data from Pokemon Battle E-Cards and cannot be legitimately obtained as an item in Western games. Floatstone Trainer An ace trainer in Rustboro City will give you a floatstone, an item that halves the weight of the user. Interestingly enough, if you leave the area the trainer was after getting the floatstone, you will find out that the trainer became a hiker gaining weight from giving his floatstone away. It's a small but funny easter egg referring to the effects of this item. Malcolm in the Middle In the 3DS remakes of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, there's a couple in c Moville called Hal and Lois. This is a clear reference to Malcolm's parents from Malcolm in the Middle, Hal and Lois. Cacophony Talking about abilities, there's data within the game of an ability known as Cacophony. Given that this ability has the same properties as Soundproof, it was most likely a prototype name. A Lance Reference If the player has Steven's shiny Beldum, Steven makes a nod to a Len, and the events of Mega Evolution during the Delta episode in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Specifically, he mentions an occasion a long time ago in which he had a chance to meet and battle Rayquaza, alongside a young trainer who used a Black Charizard. This is a nod to a Len, a Pokemon trainer seeking to defeat all Mega Evolved Pokemon using his Mega Charizard X. Psycho Boost Exclusive to Deoxys, although not for a long time, Psycho Boost is a signature move. And I said exclusive not for a long time, as Lugia was capable of learning this move after being purified. This was the most powerful psychic move with a power of 140 before prismatic laser and light that burns the sky were released with a power of 160 and 200 respectively. Unused Bike Animation The Acrobike allows players to perform tricks, such as wheelies and bunny hops, which let players reach special areas. However, there's an unused animation of the Acrobike that shows the player performing a front wheelie. One does not simply walk into a Mirage spot. In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, when played in English, the old man in the southeastern house says, one does not simply walk into a mirage spot. This is a reference to the line, 
one does not simply walk into Mordor, from the film The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. This can also be taken literally, since the mirage spots are accessed by soaring in the sky instead of walking. Hiker during cable car cutscene I don't know what the odds are, but it's said that if you take the cable car, you'll sometimes see a hiker on the path. Inaccessible Tile This is a short one. If you go to the west route of Pacific Lock, there's a platform with a tile that you cannot step on. Nothing more, nothing less. Mendel Palace's Sprite Within the game's code, there are several sprites from a character from Game Freak's first game ever, from 1989, called Mendel Palace. It is unknown why those sprites were present in Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, but what's true is that the success of this game selling 60,000 copies was part of the inspiration for Tajiri to develop Pokémon in the future. Chimeco was a mythical Pokémon. Chimeco is to many one of those forgettable Pokémon that aren't that special or useful in battle. But there's something interesting about it that makes it special, and that is its index number. Given that its index number is one of the latest, even beyond Jirachi and Deoxys, it is believed that at some point Chimeco was supposed to be another mythical Pokémon. Secret Shadow Pokémon Besides the 48 Shadow Pokémon that can be caught in Pokémon Colosseum, there are three more Shadow Pokémon most of the players in America and Europe never got to see. I'm talking about Togepi, Marip and Caesar, and the main reason why we never saw them is because they were Japan exclusive, obtainable only through e-cards. The Meaning of XD one of the most confusing elements in Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness, is the title itself. What does XD mean? Well, according to a 2005 Kotokoro magazine, XD stands for Extra Dimension. Impossible Shiny If you ever came across somebody with a shiny Celebi in Generation 3, let me tell you it was a hacked Celebi for sure. To this day, there's not a single way to obtain a shiny Celebi in Generation 3, as even those given away in special events were never able to generate a shiny one. The only way to see a shiny Celebi back then is if, somehow, a shiny Ditto transformed into your normal Celebi, given that back then, a shiny Ditto was able to transform into the shiny form of its opponent, even if the opponent had a normal Pokémon. Mew Tutor Talking about exclusive moves, in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, there's a move tutor that will say that he's been searching for a Pokemon that is considered a Mirage, supposed to be able to learn all kinds of moves. If the player answers the move tutor's questions in a very specific way, he'll teach Mew some moves that, at least in Generation 3, were impossible for this mythical Pokemon to learn, such as Faint Attack, Fake Out, Hypnosis, Nightshade, Trick, and Zap Cannon. Emerald is the hardest Pokémon game Pokémon Emerald is without a doubt the hardest game in the franchise, and I'm not talking about the main game, but what comes after beating the Elite Four. Instead of the classical battle tower from Pokémon Crystal, Ruby and Sapphire, the Emerald post-game facility was replaced with a gigantic resort, with not only the battle tower, but also other six facilities that would challenge the player in different ways. In order to stand a chance to beat these facilities, the player would need to raise very specific powerful Pokémon with high stats. Once you beat the facility, you would receive a silver symbol, but to complete the Battle Frontier challenge, you also need to get the gold symbols, and this is considered to be one of the hardest tasks. This also happened because back in Gen 3, it wasn't that easy to EV train your Pokémon or breed statistically perfect Pokémon to be up to the challenge. And since trainers in the facilities had very powerful combinations, stats and items, not too many were able to complete the greatest challenge in a Pokémon game. Scorched Slab 
The Scorched Lab is a forgettable location on Route 120, though not many know, it is modeled after one of the real-life locations that is claimed to be the cave where the sun goddess Amaterasu shut herself in for a long time in Japanese mythology. This explains why the one thing that can be found in Scorched Lab in Generation 3 is TM11, Sunny Day. Kanto and Jodo Although it doesn't seem as popular as I remember, many children back in the day were wondering where Kanto and Jodo were, and not knowing the limitations of a game, I was looking for a way to get out of Hoenn and find a way to the old regions. My way of looking for this was to surf on the edges of the map, to see if there were some sort of secret exits, or dive underwater and see if I could resurface on a secret place that could take me to Kanto or Jodo. I remember coming across several techniques on websites to achieve this. Some mentioned the typical beat the Elite Four 50 times without saving, or beat the Battle Tower 100 consecutive times. As a kid, I did just that, but obviously without any effects other than earning the gold shield to decorate my secret base. One of the main reasons why I thought it would be possible is due to the lack of certain Pokemon from Gen 1 and Gen 2 that were impossible to obtain in the region. But of course, no matter how hard I tried, I would never be able to visit other regions within the games. I guess it was the time when it became popular to wish for the perfect Pokemon game, with access to every single past region. Debug version of German Pokemon Ruby there was a debugged version of Pokemon Ruby discovered several years ago, and it allowed the user to experiment with several features of the game. I don't know how it was obtained or by whom, but it's an interesting piece of Pokemon history. AZ in Hoenn It is stated that a huge man who came from the Kalos region gave a seed to the people of Sutopolis city which turned into a tree. In the flower patch next to the big tree AZ gave, there's a flower that has the same design as the flower on the eternal flower Floet, the Floet that befriended AZ in Pokemon X and Y storyline. The Tower's Ribbons Gen 3 saw the introduction of ribbons, special items awarded to Pokemon and their trainers for special achievements. Some of these included the champion ribbon that was given to a Pokemon for beating the Elite Four. But there were others more difficult to get, like the artist ribbon, given to those Pokemon whose painting was presented in the Lilikov Museum for winning contests. However, within the data of the game, there are more mysterious ribbons, some that drew my attention are the so-called Tower Ribbons that would have been awarded for clearing the following challenges. Darkness Tower Red Tower Black Iron Tower Final Tower These places are nowhere to be seen in any Pokemon game to this date, and it is unknown why they are programmed with such specific names. Judging by the names, they sound as if they had been the final challenge for a Pokemon trainer, but the reality is that after 20 years, we might never know where they were intended to be obtained. Sapphire is better than Ruby Since the conception of Red and Blue, there have been discussions about which version is better. The same happens with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and although it mostly depends on what kind of Pokemon you like, Apparently getting Sapphire is better if you want to catch the most Pokemon. This happens because Jigglypuff and Skitty are present in both games, and both evolve with the Moonstones. The only problem? There's a single Moonstone in the entire Hoenn region of Generation 3, so only one of them can be evolved. But why is Sapphire better than Ruby? Because Lunatone is exclusive to Pokemon Sapphire and it is the only Pokemon that has a chance of holding a Moonstone that is capable of evolving the second Pokemon. Because of this, it is said that Sapphire is better than Ruby, at least in terms of catching most Pokemon. How to get to Naval Rock in Pokemon Emerald without cheats this video was posted on December 31st, 2009, by the YouTuber Munching Orange, and to this day, it's been viewed more than 3.5 million times. 
The point of this video is to trick people into thinking that this event exclusive location is accessible without cheating devices by following a series of questionable steps. Supposedly in the end, you would be able to access a house in Sutopolis city where some trees block off the path to a stairway and when you exit the house, you would magically appear in Naval Rock where Ho-Oh and Lugia are catchable. As a recurrent joke, people said things in the style of I did every single thing you did but I ended up on Pokemon Sword, highlighting the fact that they messed up the very specific steps to follow and that something went wrong. Some other similar comments are, I ended up on Pokemon Gun. Wow, really works. I caught Lucia, Ho-Oh and a shiny Charizard with my Mew3. Looker was on the SSN. In Pokemon Red and Blue, if we board the SSN, we will find an international police agent who is going after Team Rocket. Although it's not stated in the games, as far as I know, the SSN supposedly sunk somewhere in the middle of the ocean. What does it have to do with Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire? Well, in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, when we travel to the Battle Resort, we find Luker washed up on the shore. All in all, it's possible that when the SSN sank, Luker was able to survive and drifted onto Hoenn. This is supported by the fact that Gen 1 and Gen 3 happen at the same time. An interesting theory, but we might never know. 2020 Leak Information for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire was leaked in 2020, including Pokédex entries for Pokemon that are nowhere to be found in the final release. Here are some of them. Blackstone. Because its face is always the same, what it's thinking is completely unknown. Looking at it produces a calming effect. After it rains, you can see it rubbing and polishing its wet body using a leaf. Once it has attained a black luster, it seems to be satisfied. Foster. If it has no offspring, it will seek out a small living thing and place it onto its back. It brushes its teeth by gnawing on hard objects. A Pokemon that wraps its tail around to make a cradle while raising its child on its back. Sometimes it bonds with a different creature. It can run 50 meters in 7 seconds flat. Sometimes it may accidentally drop its child. Everlasting Summer A Pokemon that inhabits warm regions. Its tendency to act as a group becomes noisy when three or more gather. It's said that if you give the petals on its head to an unrequited partner, your love will come true. If you try to take its petals, it will become viciously angry. Small Oni It absorbs the electricity from lightning with its horn. Recently, it seems to have learned to absorb electricity from power outlets in homes. It appears in areas where lightning strikes. The horn on its head falls off once a year. Those with bigger horns gain respect from their friends. Water Moss The moss growing on its body has a wonderful texture. However, as it absorbs strength through its moss, it is advised not to touch it for one's own safety. It is often found in damp, shady areas. When its beautiful yellow flower blooms, it emits a horrid, trash-like smell. Hawk with its large wings, it can create wind as fast as 30 meters. A legend exists where it blew away the clouds and the sun shone down on the people. Flower It absorbs nutrients from the ground with its tail. Because its legs are extremely weak, it only moves less than 1 meter a day. It possesses the power to read human minds. It is said that if a cheerful person raises it with care, it will grow to have beautiful flowers. Scale. It creates tones by using its tail to play the disc ball atop its head. The size of its body seems to affect its timbre. It lives in small ponds filled with aquatic plants. When its friends come up and gather on the shore, they begin to play cheerful music. Sightseeing. A Pokemon that loves to fly with a human riding it. It quietly flies and is completely comfortable to ride. When it tires, it rests with its wings floating atop the sea. It has a calm personality, so it dislikes fighting. Its horns have magnetic-like cells that act as a compass. Lottery It is confirmed to change its shape at the time of evolution, but what causes it is unknown. 
It is a hot topic among Pokemon researchers. How it manipulates its body is mostly unconfirmed. It has no visible mouth and ears, but it is only known to react to sound and light. White Dragon It is constantly on the move, it lacks a permanent home, it constricts its opponents with its long body and attacks using its sharp beak. Its whole body is covered in white scales. When it flies, the scales fall off, making a sparkling belt of light in the sky. Archaeopteryx The scales on its arms have come to resemble wings. It jumps like a glider, a living fossil from the dinosaur age. The feathers on its scales are very sharp and hard, acting as weapons that are strong enough to cut iron. They move in a flock of about 10 individuals. Dragonfly It lives in thick forests. It has a large body, but is good at making fine turns, allowing it to deftly pass between trees. It can extract oxygen from water, so they occasionally live underwater as well. It loves eating the microorganisms in ponds. Red Spider Lily Its long antennae are extremely sensitive. It senses the slightest airflows to uncover its enemy's thoughts. It hypnotizes its opponents with its dance-like gestures and deep stare. Only female members of this Pokemon species have been found. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for 3000 subscribers. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.